Hey guys, we've gotten a lot of requests for how to identify opals. There are a lot of different materials used to imitate opal, and it can even be synthesized and created in a lab. So today, I'm going to tell you how to spot the difference between all of those things. For starters, what is an opal? It's beautiful, of course, and it's one of the most sought-after gemstones in the world, but if you want to get technical, it's a hydrated silica. It's actually considered a mineraloid because it lacks a crystalline structure. Instead, it's composed of tiny little silica spheres. And when these spheres are just the right size and arranged in orderly stacks and rows, they can diffract and bend light, causing unique color patterns known as play of color. And that's what makes opal so famous. Opal that has this optical phenomenon is called precious opal. When these spheres aren't so neatly arranged, you get common opal with no play of color. These can still be quite attractive and come in a variety of colors like purple, blue, green, or white. But for today's video, we're going to be talking mostly about precious opal since those are the most valuable and consequently the most imitated material. Let us know in the comments if you'd like a video all about the varieties of common opal. There are a ton and they're really cool. So when you see a precious opal, hold it in your hand and move it around. The play of colors should be visible from different angles and they should dance around depending on which angle you're viewing it from. The size of the flashes of color can vary in opal. Some opals have really small pin fire play of color, while some opals have larger patches of color and more pronounced flashes. There are so many patterns of play of color seen in precious opal that we did a whole video on them and you can check that out here. Precious opal can have a body color of white, blue, or yellow to red in the case of fire opal. The most valuable and rarest variety by far is black opal, which is characterized by a dark body color and strong play of color. If opal is the queen of gems, as Shakespeare once said, then black opal is the king of opals. At gemstones.com, you can always be sure that what we call an opal is an actual opal, but there are a number of opal simulants that have come onto the market in recent decades. So what are they, and how can you tell the difference? I'll tell you. Since the late 1970s, plastics have been used to simulate opals, often using the trade name opalite. Most of this stuff floats in water, whereas natural opal will just sink. Viewed with a loop, this material will often look scaly with what is known as a lizard skin or chicken wire pattern. In recent years, glass has also been used to make opalite. A smoother, more flawless appearance combined with air bubble inclusions are telltale signs of this material. Other popular opal simulants include plastic resins mixed with layers of dye or even glitter. Look closely at these and you'll also see bubbles as well as flow lines. You may even be able to distinguish layers of glitter within the stone. And then there's slocum stone, which is a man-made glass with pieces of thin film inside it that reflect light in different colors. You should be able to see the borders of these patches of film under magnification and also find bubbles and swirls around them. Now, with slocum stone, the guy who developed this material took his recipe and its secrets to the grave. So you don't typically find slocum stone outside of older collections, so it's probably not something you need to worry too much about. So those are all imitators, but did you know that opal can be synthesized and created in a lab? In 1974, Pierre Gilson, who was responsible for introducing other synthetic varieties of gems like turquoise and lapis lazuli, began to market synthetic opal using his Gilson method. This involves this formation of silica spherules that are then compressed and heated with a little silica gel added in to fill in the cracks. Now that whole process takes about 18 months and it creates a pretty convincing counterpart to natural opal. But there are a few key characteristics to look out for to tell the difference between the two. Firstly, Gilson opal usually exhibits that lizard skin pattern I mentioned earlier, and it also lacks spacing between its regions of color. The most telling feature, however, is seen when you view the opal from the side. Gilson opal will have regular little uniform columns of color all around its edge, which is not something you see in natural opal. But sometimes stones mistaken for opal aren't man-made at all. Other natural gemstones are confused with precious opal due to their similar appearances and optical properties. Fire agate, for example, is a variety of chalcedony that looks like fire opal with a reddish orange body color and an iridescent sheen that's due to inclusions of small platelets of limonite. Most fire agate gems grow in a botryoidal habit, so rounder, giving their color patterns certain circular shapes distinct 
distinct from opal. And if you put the two together side by side, it's pretty clear which is which. Fire agate also tends to be opaque, while fire opal allows a little bit of light through and it's translucent. Also, the iridescence on fire agate doesn't have the same quality as the play of color in opal. They're just totally different optical effects. The same can be said of sunstone. It has a totally different color flash than fire opal. The play of color seen in opal dances across the surface of the stone, and if you look closely, you can tell that the rainbow of sunstone occurs on the inside of the stone. And it also looks a little metallic in its luster. That's because the inclusions are often of copper, which is, of course, a metal. Opposite of sunstone is moonstone, which could be confused with white opal. While opal can have blue, green, red, and yellow flashes, moonstone is typically limited to a bluish billow of color called adularescence. Another feldspar, labradorite, could be confused for opal as well, especially because it has more possible colors in its colorful phenomenon, labradorescence. However, these colors wash over the surface in patches, like moonstone, and the colors are not as sharp or bright as what you see in opal. Another dark gemstone with an optical phenomenon is hawk's eye. This is a chatoyant variety of quartz, like tiger's eye, but with a dark blue body color, like black opal. Chatoyancy is not to be mistaken for play of color or for any of the other phenomena, like labradorescence and adularescence that we've talked about so far. There's also amylite. These are ancient fossilized cephalopod shells that get a vibrant rainbow of colors. They can definitely look like opal at a quick glance, but I encourage you to look closer. Amylite's rainbow of color usually has more structure, with colors arranged in bands or patches with defined edges. The surface texture is also a little bit more ridged or often wavy. So when you're out looking or shopping for opal, keep these lookalikes in mind. A lot of lookalikes, but only one opal. Lastly, let's talk about opal jewelry, specifically doublets and triplets. So these were developed to stretch opal material a little bit further and make opal jewelry more available to more people. Now there's nothing wrong with making opal jewelry in this way, but it's important to know what these look like in case someone is trying to pass them off to you as solid opal. That is a scam and we don't want to be scammed. In an opal doublet, a thin slice of opal is mounted to a backing, like ironstone or chalcedony or even something man-made. This is done with the idea that you can enjoy the full beauty of the opal without the price of a solid piece of opal, which is very expensive. A triplet is made with an even thinner slice of opal and with that same backing, but with a little dome on top of clear quartz or glass or plastic. It's basically an opal sandwich. Since it uses an even thinner slice than in a doublet, a triplet is even more affordable. In a mosaic triplet, the middle layer is made of various small pieces of precious opal put together like a little puzzle. You can identify both doublets and triplets by observing them from a the side. You should be able to see the layers of opal and then of backing and then the dome in the case of a triplet just with your naked eye. Also with a triplet, if you look closely from different directions, you should be able to see that the play of color is not at the surface of the stone, but rather deeper below the transparent dome, which is not what solid opal looks like. If you're interested in opal from a collector's standpoint, boulder opal and matrix opal are a great place to start. Sometimes a bit of opal will just peek through in the matrix and it's either too small to get out or it's a little bit too risky to dig out in its entirety because you don't know how much opal is there. So sometimes it's just left in the matrix as it is. And it's still beautiful that way. We have some material from Honduras that you can check out in the description below. It's beautiful, really dark body color, and it's got like little reds and blues and greens like a little galaxy. It's gorgeous. So when you're identifying an opal, it's always a good idea to give it a really close look with your loop. And remember, experience is key. So look at all of the opals that you can, get familiar with the simulants as well and their different colors and textures. One good way to do that would be to subscribe to our channel so you learn about all kinds of gemstones, not just opal. If you wanna learn how to spot another kind of gemstone, let us know down in the comments. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks for watching.